Welcome to Hope City. If this is your first time, will you wave at me? And come on, Hope City, let's give it up for our new family. Amazing. Can we also welcome our Cinco, our Woodlands, and our online campus as well? Come on. Now, come on, West Hughes. That's where you're supposed to shout. Come on. We can't hear you, but Cinco makes some noise. Okay, let's go. Woodlands, if you're at home, just put your bowl of cereal down and yell. So good to see you. If we haven't had the privilege of meeting just yet, my name is Daniel Groves, and myself, and along with my wife and our incredible team, we have the privilege and the honor of serving you and serving this amazing church family, and we're grateful. Look around the room. This is what heaven looks like. Multicultural, multi-generational, no, like, look around the room, come on. Multi-generational, multicultural, and last weekend and last week, uh, it was a lot, and the truth is, when we leaned into his presence as a church family, God replaced frustration and brokenness and pain with his goodness and his faithfulness. And the thing is about his presence, when you take that, it's a lot. I mean, this is just a lot. When you take that a lot and you put it in the hands of God, he has the incredible ability to overshadow you with his peace and unlock healing in your life. How many of y'all are grateful that God has still not ran out on you, that he is still your healer, that he is still your restorer, and he is your very present help in a time of need? Uh, this week, uh, for me personally, just being really transparent, 1 Peter 5, 7 was my go-to. The Amplified says, cast all your cares, your worries, your anxieties, one sin for all on the Lord, because he cares for you. I had a friend of mine say, when you put it in God's hands, stop monitoring what you placed in his hands. I, that's a whole word right there. Stop monitoring what you placed in his hands, because he's big enough and strong enough and mighty enough to heal, fix, and replace the heaviness we are in day seven today of 21 days of prayer and fasting as a church family. I pray you've joined us. Here's the truth. You still have time. You go to hopesafe.com slash 21 days. We have a prayer guide there that you can download. We have 14 days left. I want to encourage you to lean in. Y'all, we had an incredibly powerful time yesterday as a church family. We gathered here at West Houston at Cinco and at the Woodlands and a bunch of people gathered all over to pray and spend time in God's presence. This Saturday coming up, say this Saturday. That's good. Y'all sound good today. Look at the person next to you and say, you sound good. All right. Look at your second choice and say, I'm glad you're here. <laughs> this Saturday coming up at 9 a.m., we're meeting again, and we're going to gather. I'm telling y'all, faith is rising. The ground is swelling. Revival is on the horizon. How many of y'all believe that miracles are still breaking out? So I would love, on behalf of our team and my wife and I, we would love for y'all to join us coming up this next Saturday the foundation of Hope City since day one, the foundation has always been built on God's presence. That has always been the thread that has ran through, but we're also a church that believes in prayer. Prayer is not the glass box on the wall that says break in case of emergency. Where when you're in a crisis, well, I guess we should pray. No, 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 it is something that is a lifestyle. It's something that out of the overflow of our relationship with God, we see God's hand moving in all the intricacies of our life because prayer is the arena where our faith meets God's abilities. And if you've been around Hope City for any amount of time, you know this line right here. Prayer should always be our first priority, not our last resort. Like, I grew up and, and I would hear like, whew, that's, that's tough. Maybe you should pray about it. Like, no, no, I should have already been pray, praying about it. It should be our first priority, not our last resort. And maybe you're here and you're like, well, you know, prayer's a little overwhelming for me. I don't really know what to do. I kind of don't know what to say. Uh, this weekend's going to be a little more, more personal. Uh, I want this to be something where you can kind of approach this weekend as a daddy to a daughter, a father to a son moment. The rest of this month, we're going to be praying. We're going to pray for our city, y'all. We're going to pray for our church. We're going to pray for our nation. But I want you to be today, I want you to just position yourself as a daughter or a son and allow God to meet you where you're at. Sometimes it can feel a little overwhelming. For me, just to let you in on my life, for me, it's a conversation with God like I'm talking to you. That's how I pray. And here's the thing. God is never caught off guard, just so you know. Like, I think sometimes we approach him like, hey, God, it's me. It's Brian. And he's like, I know, I made you. Like, I knit you together in your mother's womb. Like, I love it in Genesis when Adam and Eve messed up, and he was like, where are you? God knew where they were. He knows you. He sees you. He loves you. That's why it's so important to be transparent, authentic, and honest, because God can't fix, heal, or restore who you pretend to be. 
And so all the way through the next 14 days, as we get in the word and we get into worship and we pray and fast together more, I'm telling you, God is wanting to take us deeper. He wants us to hear his voice even clearer. Like I said, for me, it's like a conversation, like a son to a father, a daughter to her dad. These prayerful conversations. I'll just get in my truck and instead of turning on the radio, I'll just talk to the Lord just like this. And he knows. I'll say, God, you know. You know exactly what I need right now. You know the peace I need. You know the clarity I need. You know the wisdom I need. You know the joy that I need because I know that that's my strength. And the thing about God is he, he can even hear if you're quiet. He can see your heart and he knows what you're going through. How many of y'all, you're terrible at reading lips? Come on, I just want to just do a little poll. Like if somebody tries to like, you know, like <laughs> my wife will try to get my attention across the room. She'll be like, I'll say, what was that? And she'll be like, I'm like, you want pepper? You want pepper and coffee? Oh, peppermint mocha latte. Sorry, I didn't get it. So the other day, we were talking, Jackie and I were talking. Our kids were in the room, and, and we used to be able to spell, but now our oldest two can spell, so we can't. And grammatically, she's the smart one. I don't spell well. Anyways, praise God. Like, I'm not starting a Scrabble Connect group anytime soon, just so you guys know. So I'm looking at her, and I'm like, and she's like, what? And I was like, she's like, I don't. She's like, you're just going to have to say it. So I said it, and she's like, that's what you were trying to say? She's like, it was almost like you didn't know what word was coming out next. Like, <laughs> but here's the truth. When you pray and you talk to God, even in a whisper or just a glance in his direction, he sees and hears you. I said it a moment ago, nothing catches him off guard. He's not like, Linda messed up again. Jesus, you're going to have to go back down there. I can't believe this. <laughs> no, he knows. Yeah. Say it out loud. He knows me. He knows you. So again, why it's so important to be authentic so important to take the time every single day to pray and have conversations with God. It's going to step on somebody's toes. If you have time to complain about it, then you have time to pray about it. If you have time to blow up everybody's phones and text everybody about your stuff, then you may not want resolve. You may just want attention. Okay, let me go back here. If, <laughs> it's true. If you have time to complain about it, words are seeds. Think twice and speak once. If you have time to complain about it, then you probably have time to have a conversation with the Lord about it. I decided as we kicked off 21 days of prayer this year, 2022, which is going to be the greatest year, I just keep declaring it, of all of our lives, our church family, you as individuals. That was, thank you for your overwhelming enthusiasm. I believe 2022 is gonna be, all right, that's better. <laughs> I've decided this year, Instead of complaining and talking about how big my storm is, I'm going to start talking to my storm about how big my God is. Instead of praying about my problems, I'm, I started thanking God for his promises. Y'all know the access that we have to his promises? So one way that we do it as a church family, my wife and I personally, and then our team, we like to pray the word. Maybe you're watching in online, or maybe you're in the room and you're like, the truth is I, I haven't heard the Lord's voice in a long time. I've struggled to even hear his voice and I really am leaning in this 21 days of prayer. Let me say it this way. I used to, and I've said this in the past, but I've used, I used to treat the presence of God like an ibuprofen, like a painkiller Jesus. Like, ah, uh, I need a little, bit, a little bit of healing. And it would be like an ibuprofen to a headache. And then I discovered that he wanted to heal my entire life. Again, this is gonna be a challenging Step it up, weekend as our church family as we continue to press in the next 14 days. Don't say God is silent if your Bible stays closed. That's what I said. That's what I said. They say statistically, the average Christian in America reads their Bible 13 minutes a month. How are you supposed to live out of the overflow on 13 minutes a month? We're a very devotional. 59 seconds of fire. I love the U version. I love devotionals. I like reading it. I like seeing clips. It encourages me. But that's supplements. That's like, that's like omega-3s and vitamin Cs. Y'all don't have a, I don't have a shiny beard like this without supplements. But I can't live and function with clarity and peace of mind and who I'm supposed to be physically without real food. 13 minutes a month? The average Christian, they say, prays 21 minutes a month. And that includes over their food. Just let that sink in. We're wondering why we're just kind of surviving life, 
trying to figure it out in our own strength, Googling it before we go to God for it. This is the cheesiest line I'm gonna say in a long time. We need to get off Facebook and get your face in the book. All right, that was terrible. I won't do that again. I apologize for everybody who's new. That wasn't okay. I apologize. One of our favorite ways to pray is we pray the word. If you're here and you're like, I just don't know what to say, you pray the word. Get in Psalms, read it and pray it. Get in Proverbs, read it and pray it. And then you can make it personal. So let's example, Proverbs chapter three, verse six. In all your ways, acknowledge him and he will direct your paths. Make it personal. In all my ways, I will acknowledge you and you, my savior, you, my God, will direct my paths. Instead of praying your problems, begin to focus and be grateful for his promises. More examples, God, you know, it's me. I put a little bit in the offering, but I'm broke as a joke. I'm struggling, and you're telling everybody about it. Why not go and say, hey, God, here's a promise. Philippians 4.19, you said you'd supply all my needs according to your riches and glory, and I believe I'm gonna be so blessed that I can bless some other people. So instead of putting those words out there, oh, you're one of those blab and grab it. No, Job 22.28 says, decree a thing and it shall be established. I'm blessed coming in and going out. I'm the head and not the tail. I have favor everywhere I go. Jesus walked in favor with, with men and, and God in Luke chapter two, verse 52. We have the same access. Pray the word. God, I'm struggling in my body. God, I thank you for your promise in Isaiah 58, eight, that just as sure as the sun will rise, health, strength, and life is gonna spring forth speedily. Your righteousness goes out in front of me and your glory overtakes me. That means you have my back, you have my now, and you have my next. That's a promise, it's in the word. So instead of speaking about your problems, this whole month I'm declaring his promises. He knows you, he loves you. He wants to spend time with you, and he wants, to he wants you to declare his promises over your life today. Have you ever heard anybody say, uh, well, I said it earlier, but just a little bit more in depth, like, well, that's just not me. Like, where's, uh, where's, where's uh, Sister Sarah at? She's the saint that prays, like fire falls from the sky. Like, don't call on me. And then that one person, they get super panicked, and somebody asks them, like, pray over the food. They're like, no, she can pray. <laughs> Here's the thing about prayer. Uh, the only way to not be good at prayer, the only way to not be good at prayer is to not show up. That's it. We all have access to the same prayer, strength, and foundation. We all have access to the Holy Spirit. We were all given the same measure of faith. We all have access and the ability to pray through things. So again, the only way to not be good at prayers to not show up. Even Jesus, I'm gonna show you this in Mark 1, even Jesus showed up to pray. Now this is going to, uh, this is going to step on a couple of people's toes. Watch this, Mark 1, 35. Very early in the morning, some of you are like, I'm out. <laughs> this is not my verse. You're taking this out of context. This is, this is not for me. No, watch this. Very early in the morning, while it's still dark, Jesus got up, he left the house, and he went off to a solitary place and he prayed. Y'all, if Jesus, the model behind everything we do this, the foundation we build our life on can do this, be stronger than your strongest excuse. Look at the person next to you and say, you should pray more. Come on, let them know. You should pray more. When you make prayer your priority, miracles will actually become your lifestyle. So we show up, we make a choice to get in his presence daily. Here's two foundational, fundamental verses that we should be applying every day. Matthew 6, verse 33. If you've been around church for any amount of time, you know it. Seek first. Another translation says, above all else. Another translation says, as your first priority, the kingdom of God and his righteousness. Watch this. And all these things. That's everything you need when you need it. The wisdom, the clarity, the peace, the perseverance, the fight, the joy. Everything you need when you need it. It's found in his presence. Proverbs chapter three, verse six through nine. I love how the message reads. It says, listen. Now, this is a little sobering. Listen for God's voice in everything you do. Stop for a minute. How many of us actually do that? It's super tough in our humanity, right? Listen for God's voice in everything you do and everywhere you go. Why? Because he's the one that will keep you on track. Now, it gets really exciting at verse seven. Watch. Don't assume you know it all. Run to God. Run to God. I love that phrase, run to God, because I think of it as surrender. If you're taking down notes, write this down. Surrender isn't a one-time event. It's a daily choice. 
Surrender isn't a one and done moment. It's a daily choice. First Chronicles 16, 11 says, seek the Lord. Seek is literally, you have to pursue it. It's a choice. Seek the Lord in his strength. Seek his presence. I love this word, continually. First Thessalonians chapter five or 17 talks about how we are to pray continually. The New Living Translation literally says, never stop praying. It's this posture of just listening and praying to the Lord all throughout the day. Taking care of kids, you're doing the laundry. God, I thank you. Jesus, you've been faithful. You are the way maker. You are the miracle worker. God, thank you. Let me just, let me just take a, a walk back through memory lane and talk about all that you've done. And the truth is, I'm in a rough spot right now, but if you did it before, I know that you can do it again. And if you showed up and fought for me before, I know that you're right here with me again. You're just one mention of your name away from being right there again. In my life, when I have this consistent repetition of continually talking to the Lord and praying, y'all, there's so much noise in our life, and we have to learn to turn it off. Instead of turning on talk radio, you should pray. Now, you don't have to be the guy that's just all heavenly minded all the time. You're like, hey, Daniel, okay, I'm talking to Jesus. Like, <laughs> but there's this heart, this mindset. It's an overflow of your relationship with God. And this is what happens when I pray his word and I focus on his problems or his promises over my problems. I start noticing this. My stress decreases. Uh, uh, anxiety begins to fade. Fear can no longer have a grip on me because fear tolerated is faith contaminated. So the more I pray his word and I'm not focused on my problems, but his promises, I feel it slipping away. Anxiety begins to lift. Panic attacks stop because out of the overflow, the presence of God fills those places in your life that are trying to rob you of your joy, rob you of your confidence and courage. I'm telling you, if you want to experience miracles, I was talking to a lady the other day. She said, I just want to see a miracle. And she was talking about miracles like overseas, like she's heard about all of these. And so she started talking about her family and I said, that's a miracle. She's like, that's a, yeah, that, that's a miracle. How many guys have experienced miracles? Come on. Yeah. I promise you, if you look at the intricacy of your life, it showed up for me. All the way back at the beginning of my life when my mom was sitting, give my parents her hand, they're actually watching online right now. <laughs> all the way back at the beginning when my mom was contemplating aborting me. And the doctor said, you probably shouldn't keep this baby because this is a really messed up situation. We were like a Jerry Springer episode on 10. And my mom was going through all this abuse and all this chaos. And my dad was an alcoholic and a drug. He struggled with all kinds of drug problems and addictions. And my mom kept going back and going back and wondering, what is this life all about? Speed up in the history of our story and a lady ministered to her, some of you know the story, in a Kroger cereal aisle in Grove City, Ohio, and just mentioned the name of Jesus and talked to my mom about going to church. See, I could say, Psh, wish I could see miracles. That was a miracle. And then this over here where God showed up for Jackie and I when our baby, Brecken, had no amniotic fluid left and we were in, rushing to the hospital with emergency distress. No, we got to the hospital and they said, we don't know what happened between the ultrasound and here, but there's nothing wrong. Your baby's fine. The fluid's good. No, no. God showed up here. He showed up here. He showed up here. We do something in Hope City where we talk about the first 15. First 15. First five in worship. First five in the word. First five in prayer every day. And then I added a fourth spiritual discipline a couple months ago, and it's the discipline of simply remembering. Because the enemy wants to try to tell you, this right here is going to destroy you. And you can say, that's pretty ironic, devil, because watch this. I typically am not entertaining a conversation with you because James 4, 7 says I have the authority to resist you and you have to go. But before you go, let me simply remember God showed up here. God showed up there. God showed up here. God, I'm telling you, it builds your faith. It builds your faith. Philippians chapter four, verse six and seven says, do not be anxious about anything, but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God and the peace of God. We all need that. Say, I need that peace, which surpasses all understanding will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. I've learned in this season, if I don't pray about everything, eventually I won't pray about anything. So it is a daily process and a daily routine of talking to the Lord. He, he wants to be your closest friend, not only your father and your good, good father, but he also wants to be near 
to the brokenhearted. Here at Hope City, our routine here is not based upon tradition or religion. It's based upon relationship. If you're taking down notes, write this down. My relationship with God is not out of convenience. It's out of covenant. And covenant is a foundation. Colossians chapter two, verse seven says this, let your roots grow down in him and let your lives be built on him. That's the foundation. That's the covenant. Then your faith will grow strong and the truth where you were taught and you will overflow with thanksgiving. All throughout this 21 days of prayer and fasting, maybe you started noticing the little nudges of the Holy Spirit. Maybe the still small voice of the Lord the other night. I woke up at 1.45 in the morning. It was just up and I felt the presence of God. And it wasn't spooky. I wasn't like floating on a cloud. Like, what's happening? Like, now I walked over to our couch and I sat down and I began to pray through some things. I began to read the word. I began to pray his promises. The things that I know are yes and amen. The things that I know to be true. That I am fearfully and wonderfully made. That from the moment of conception, he is faithful to complete the work he started in me. Y'all, from 145 to about 430, I was fired up. And I was like this. And she was asleep. Like, I couldn't wake her up. God filled me up, spoke life into me. I woke up the next day ready to take on hell with a water gun. How many of you guys have been sensing the presence of God this past seven days? Come on, even in the midst of heaviness and in the midst of frustration, in the midst of all kinds of things, if you lean in, I'm telling you, he'll meet you where you're at. It's so important for us to stay in tune with God, get on God's Frequency. If you go on a road trip, we were on a road trip, and you know, every time you're on a road trip, you start searching and seeking. Boom, a song comes. I swear by the moon and the stars in the sky. Come on, everybody, sing this in the car. I'll be there. <laughs> Mamas, don't let your babies grow up to be cowboys. What's this? Because <laughs> what happens is, the further you get away. From the further the signal gets away from the source, the further it, 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 you, start, you won't be able to hear it. It, it weakens the strength. You just feel it pulling away. The further you get away, the signal weakens. The further you get away from the source, the reality is the Holy Spirit is always speaking. Look at the person next to me and say, he's always speaking. I don't have greater access to the Holy Spirit than you do. That's just true. We all have access to the Holy Spirit. Distractions in life messes with our ability to tune into the signal, the frequency, and it tries to pull us away from the source. You want to hear God more in your life over the rest of this month and into this entire year? You have to stay connected to the source. I referenced this verse last week, John 15, 5. I'm the vine. This is God. You're the branches. That's us. If you remain in me and I in you, you will bear much fruit. But apart from me, you can do nothing. Staying connected to the vine brings daily clarity in your life. Some of y'all are looking at me like, he, lo he looks like he's on fire. Yeah, I'm wearing a, Jackie made me wear a full-blown turtleneck today. It's 90. My God. Jeez. I'm up here like, that's, that's fire. Y'all should shout. But really, I'm melting up here. The disciples knew how important prayer was. <laughs> Interesting moment happens in Luke 11 with the disciples. So during this time with Jesus, they could have asked him anything. They could have said, hey, Jesus, can you teach me how to walk on water? Why, Peter? <laughs> I already did it. It'll help him. He went, this, these other guys need to walk on water too. Why do they need to? Because it would be awesome, right? Or they're like, hey, Jesus, can you teach us how to turn water into wine? It'd be a fun wedding party trick, right? No, no, no. The disciples knew in Luke 11, watch this. Once Jesus was in a certain place, verse one, as he finished, one of his disciples came to him and said, Lord, teach us to pray. They understood the source of the power. They understood the assignment. Prayer is the pipeline to God. It is not an all request hotline. Prayer will get you closer to his heart and you will begin to speak his promises and pray his will. I referenced this verse also last week. It's in my top five favorite verses in the Bible. First John 5, 14. This is the confidence. Y'all know this. Say it out loud with me. When approaching God, that if we ask anything according to his will, he hears us. Boy, that's powerful. This confidence. My kids have a different posture of confidence with me. Why? Because I'm their dad. So they walk up to me and they're like, hey, can I get 10 bucks? I'm like, no. Go ask your mom. And she's like, nope. But if some other random kid walks up and says, can I get 10 bucks? I'm like, where's your parent? Like, well, pepper spray you. I don't know you. You know what I mean? 
Now, there's a different level of confidence when you're a son or you're a daughter, when you know who you are or whose you are, when you approach his presence and you begin to pray prayers according to his will, you'll also start praying audacious, bold prayers. I remember when my mom went to the pastors of the church we were going to, and she said, uh, we have a really messed up situation. My husband has strung out all kinds of addictions, drugs, alcohol, abusing. It's, mad. it's bad. Like everything is falling apart. And I think I want to leave him. And the pastor said, I want to pray one last dangerous prayer. My mom said, you said dangerous prayer? He said, dangerous prayer. I was like, will it kill him? I didn't know y'all had all that. I didn't know you had, that's like clergy power. Like, God struck him down. Like, and he said, no, that's what we're going to do. He brought his wife over and some other, the elders, and he said, God, you're not the God of condemnation, but a good healthy dose of conviction right now for David would be just about right. Send somebody across his path in whatever bar he's sitting in, bed he's laying in, whatever he's doing. If he shoots up, don't let him get high. If he drinks, don't let him get drunk. If he smokes, make him sick. Some of y'all are like, well, that's pretty harsh. Well, hell's a whole lot worse. And so she prayed this dangerous prayer. And three weeks later, my dad said every cigarette he smoked made him sick. He said he would drink and he'd be like, what's the matter with this? Like, and he hit rock bottom and told my mom, I want to go to church with you today. My mom's like, what happened? She thought he was going to fight the pastor. Like, she didn't know what was going on. <laughs> this is a true story. He shows up to this little church in the middle of nowhere. And he had one encounter with the Savior. Not religious encounter, but a relationship encounter with Jesus. You know, my dad's 33 years clean to... Uh, this year, third. No more alcohol abuse, no more drugs. They're watching online. They're strong in the Lord. Their marriage is a model marriage because he surrendered to God. Prayer is the reason that my family is set free. Maybe you're here today and you're like, man, I need that. I need that bold, audacious prayer. I've got some family members or a loved one or a spouse that doesn't know the Lord. Maybe today, maybe this month, the next 14 days, we begin to pray God-sized prayers, not timid prayers, like tumor-shrinking, cancer-disappearing prayers. Come on, somebody, like diabetes-disappearing prayers, like chronic pain-disappearing prayers, like marriages restored, addictions broke off, restoration, and families type of prayers. I prayed a prayer at this church I was preaching at, and this lady came up, and she goes, well, I just want you to pray for my son, Damien. He's in jail. I said, okay. And she said, I want you to pray that dangerous prayer, that bold prayer. I said, let's go. I said, God, I pray for Damien, God, right now in that jail cell. God, I just pray, Lord, that you would convict him. She said, constipate him, God. I said, <laughs> it's a true story. I said, what? She said, he's constipated. I said, let me pray. Let... <laughs> she said, it might help him. I'm like, we're just, I'm not sure if that's according to his will. <laughs> constipate him, God, it's a true story. <laughs> oh, Damien, who you become is determined by how you pray. Let me say it again. Who you become is oftentimes based upon how you pray. The transcript of your prayers becomes the script of your life. What are you praying? What are you saying about yourself? I'm messed up. Uh, it rains, it pours on me. I'm broke. My family's been broke. I've always been broke. Somebody's sick. That new Decepticon, whatever it's called, a Megatron, whatever that new variant is, I know I'm probably going to get it. Sheila was sneezing. I'll probably get that too. Like, no, 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 no. Put, put a filter over your mouth and your words. Think twice and speak once. The transcript of your prayers, how you speak, how you declare things is the script of your life. Throughout the course of this 21 days, we want you to lean in and realize the power of prayer, your prayer life and what happens when your prayers sync with God's desires. Because I want you to hear this. God doesn't see things the way we see them. What? He doesn't see things the way we see them. No, no, no. What looks like a battle to us looks like an opportunity for God. I'll say that again. What looks like a battle to you looks like an opportunity for God to show his glory, his faithfulness, and his mighty hand to move in your life. So again, God doesn't deal in problems. He ultimately deals in promises. As we bring this in for a close this week, we take on the challenge of the next 14 days, of 21 days of prayer and fasting. I want to challenge you and encourage you at all of our locations, watching online from anywhere all over the world, lean in and take this seriously. You want to hear his voice? Lean into his presence. You want to get a, a breakthrough in the area that you're struggling in? Lean into his presence. You want clarity in that area of your life? Lean into his presence. And I want to give you a few ways to really get the most out of the next 14 days of prayer. You can write these down. Don't read, don't just read the Bible, start praying his promises. 
Don't just read through the Bible. The way I like to read is I'll read through the Bible and then I'll begin to pray some of the verses I read. I thank you, God. In Philippians chapter four, verse 13, that I have all the strength that I need. I begin to, pr I begin to pray while praying. Keep a journal. My friend Todd is in the room and he, he writes everything down. And he told me the other day, he said, hey, you should do this. You should write. And he's like really nice notebooks. And he said, I, I do this so I can pass these down to my kids and their kids' kids. That blesses me. So while we're praying, you should write it, because this is the, the cool thing about writing it down and, and putting your faith on it. Uh, when it happens and the prayer is answered, you can go back and say answered and write the date. And then 10 years from now, when the enemy tries to tell you, hey, this is gonna mess you up, you say, let me show you something real quick. Answered, answered, answered. While praying, keep a journal. While praying, define your faith. What are you believing for? What are you expecting from God this year? Something that's been in your heart, maybe a business or a dream or a goal. While praying, define your faith. Hebrews 11 one says, faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. I said this to our staff this week. I said, close your eyes and look through the filter of faith. I need all, I actually do that with me. Man, I feel this on me right now. I want everybody to close your, close your eyes real quick. Across all campuses. I want you to just begin to picture what is that area of your life? What is that area of your life that you need a miracle in, that you need a breakthrough in, that you need healing in? Just picture it through the filter of faith right now. I told our staff this week, I said, I want you to picture those silos painted, that building built, thousands of people from all over the world, thousands of people gathering in his name through the filter of faith. God, we see revival on the horizon. We see greater miracles and deliverance and breakthrough. God, we see greater miracles. We see people getting up out of wheelchairs. Come on, we see people set free, healed, and delivered. Why not? Because you're a big God. Our friend Mike Todd says it's only crazy until it happens. God, we wanna lean in. And while praying, we're gonna define our faith. And the last one, while praying, declare your miracle. Can you stand with me as we bring this in for a landing? I wanna pray over you, God. I pray today that your healing power would begin to spring forth speedily in every individual in the room. Would you lift your hands like this, open-handed? Allow him to remove some things in your life that are maybe a hindrance, that are trying to mess with your joy, that are trying to mess with your confidence. And this is what I wanna do. While our hands are lifted, here's Cinco Woodlands and online at your home or wherever you're at. Just lift your hands and make room for his presence. Make room for him to overflow and overshadow you with his goodness and his mercy. God, we're gonna lean in this month. We're gonna take this serious this month because we see your hand is moving. The sovereign hand of God is at work and God, we don't wanna get in the way. We will make room for you to do whatever. To do whatever you want to. To do whatever you want to. Come on, make it personal. I I will make room for you, yeah, to do whatever you want to, to do whatever you want to. Come on, can you say it even bolder? Come on, say it. I will make room for you, to do it.
to to do it. Whatever you want to. Come on, one more time. I will make room. just for a moment if you're here and you say Daniel man I want to know more about this this prayer walk I want to know more about going deeper but the truth is I don't know Jesus as my Savior maybe somebody invited you today and you're something in your heart convinced you of the fact today that there's more to life than the way you've been living it and you said I, I, I'm fallible I'm flawed I'm I'm messed up but the truth is there's enough mercy for every mess up there's enough grace for every goof up if you're in here today and you say, Daniel, I wanna know Jesus as my savior, Romans 10, verse nine and 10. says, confess with your mouth and believe in your heart that Jesus is Lord and you will be saved. At Hope City, we don't pray prayers for symbolic ritual. We don't just say it to say it. There is power. This is a holy moment. The reason we do all of this, the reason we sing songs and have sermons and we gather in his name is for one reason. It's the rock of our salvation, the author and the finisher of our faith, Jesus, who loves you, He's not mad at you, but actually madly in love with you. Or maybe you're here and you say, Daniel, the truth is, I used to walk with Jesus, but I fell, a, I fell away. I got caught up in the prodigal life. And today, I realized I need to get my life reconnected with Jesus. Every eye closed here, Cinco Woodlands, online right now. Just type yes in the chat. Our team is there. I'm going to count to three. I want to give my life to Jesus. Or two, I want to rededicate my life. One, two, three. Three, that's me. Daniel, you're talking to me. One, two, three, four, five, six. I'm hand, 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 a whole row of Come on, somebody, give God praise. Hands all over the room. All right, put your hands down. I want everybody to pray this, including our Hope City worship family and everybody on our team. Pray this with everybody that just gave, that just lifted up their hand and everybody online. And pray this with us today. Say, Jesus, it's me. I've been living for me. It's not working. I need a savior. He's living for me. I'm failing and I'm falling apart. I cannot do this in my own strength. I lay every mistake, every failure, every sin, all of it at your feet. And I ask for your forgiveness. From this day on, I'm going to choose to walk with you. You are my father. You are my savior and you are my Lord, I will make room for you in every area of my life. In Jesus' name, amen. Come on, Hope City, let's give God praise.